sure as the waves will reach the shore sure as the sun paints the morning sky sure as the sunset gives way to evening stars and moonlight bathes the earth in gentle light
Hey Vineyard Kids, I'm Steph and this is Beck Becca, what are you doing? Oh, hey, hey everyone. I mean, I'm reading the most important book written in the whole wide world stuff. It's the Bible. Okay. okay. Did you notice how many pages and look at how tiny these there's a whole lot of words. Did you know that there are 66 books inside of this book? And then in each of those books, there's a bunch of chapters inside of each of those. That's a whole lot of words and a whole lot of things. But like, we know that this is the most important book that was ever written. So I'm wondering if we should pick one of those 66 books and actually like, just read what it says. Maybe we'll pick one that doesn't have a whole bunch okay. of chapters, but just like a few chapters. We can really read what's in there. It's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. So, do you like have a favorite one, or how do you like? So, pick when it? I start to read the Bible, I use a very technical way of. We are going to do the Book of Philippians. Philippians. Did, Philippians. Did I say it right? Philippians. 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 Yeah, I think that's right. It's written right. by a guy named Paul. Huh? Um, and actually, what we're gonna do is let's just start with the first like couple verses and see what happens. Take it from the top. Take it from the top. Verse 1, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. Verse 2, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Is that it? That was the first two verses. To all God's holy... So what's oh, that about? All God's holy people in Christ Jesus. Like, that's... that's us, Everyone. we are okay. God's holy people. So that, and we are, we so are. So it's then. about our identity. It's about our identity. If we have said yes to being forever friends of Jesus, we're part of God's family. And that means we're, I know exactly what we're doing for our story. Oh, all right. Ready? Father Abraham had many sons. Many sons have fathers. Okay, okay, okay. I, I get it. And I am one of them. At first, I and wasn't so was she totally sure where so she was let's all pray going the with Lord's this. But right arm. Abraham is a Father really Abraham important person for us to talk sons. about because the whole deal many about us being God's holy Abraham. chosen people comes back to a choice that Abraham way. made. So we can find all about our identity, all about our history and our heritage from this guy named There was once a man named Abraham. He and his family lived in a place called Ur. And by family, it wasn't just his mom and dad. It was his mom, dad, sisters, brothers, uncles, aunts, cousins, second cousins, third cousins, lots and lots of family. You see, back then, you were safer if you were in a big group. You were less likely to be robbed or attacked by another group of people if your group of people was really big. Going out on your own in the ancient world was a dangerous thing to do. So people didn't go out on their own. They stuck with their families. One day, God showed up and said, Abraham, I want you to go out on your own. At this point, Abraham didn't know that much about God. He didn't have the Bible like we do because it hadn't been written yet. He couldn't go to church like we can because there weren't any churches yet. But Abraham chose to trust God. So when God said to him, leave your family and follow me, do you know what he said? Okay. I know. Crazy. Why did Abraham trust God when he didn't even know him yet? Would you have trusted God if you were Abraham? God told Abraham that if he did what God asked, he wouldn't be alone. God would be with him. God asked, Abraham, how many stars are there in the sky? Let me see. 993, 994, 997. Uh-oh. No. Wait. One. Two. Abraham kept losing count. Too many, he told God. Guess what? God laughed. I will give you so many children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, you won't be able to count them either. Your family will become an entire nation, and they'll have their own land, and the whole world will be blessed, given an amazing gift through you and your kids.
It was an incredible promise. God was going to rescue the world through Abraham's family. One of his great, 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 great grandchildren would be the promised one, the rescuer. Abraham thought this was too wonderful. He didn't have any children, and he was really old. He was 99 years old. How could this be true? But again, Abraham chose to trust God. Whoa. Abraham again said, okay. Abraham and his wife Sarah left their family and their country. They left everything behind and wandered off into the middle of nowhere following a God he'd just met. Abraham trusted what God said more than what his own eyes could see. Sarah, Abraham's wife, heard God's promises and laughed. But it was a sad laugh, filled with tears. She'd always wanted a baby, but could her dream come true? She was 90 years old. Sarah didn't believe God could do what he promised. But nine months later, just as God had promised, Sarah gave birth to a baby boy. They named him Isaac, which means son of laughter. Sarah laughed again, and this time it was a really, really happy laugh. Her dream had come true. God would do as he promised. He would always look after Abraham's family, his special people. And one day, God would send another baby, a baby promised to a girl who didn't even have a husband. But this baby would bring laughter to the whole world. This baby would be everyone's dream come true. Okay, so I think you might want to read that verse again, the beginning of Philippians. Okay. Because then we can kind of tie it all together. Okay, okay. All right, Philippians 1, verses 1 and 2. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's what's important to think about, right? Where it says, to all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi. So this book, this book called Philippians, was written to a group of people that lived in the city of Philippi. God's holy people, what is that? That is those of us that have said yes to being forever friends with Jesus. And we can look all the way back to for a really, really long time ago to this guy named Abraham who had no kids, but God made him an incredible promise. He said, your descendants and the rescuer, Jesus, is going to come from your family. And so all of us have this incredible history of knowing we came from a guy who just chose to say yes. He chose to trust God and look what incredible things happened. He had a baby at 100 years old and his wife was 90. That's like if our great grandparents had just suddenly had a baby. But that's yeah. what's incredible about God. He takes impossible situations and he makes it possible. So that's always good for us to remember. So when we think about our identity, we can think about where we've come from. We can think about Abraham and the incredible way that he chose to trust God. And then what did he say when God asked him to do something? He said, okay, which is basically like saying, I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sure God, but I'm going to choose to trust that you are in control and I'm going to do what you're asking me to do. Maybe he wasn't totally sure, but he still said yes and did what God asked him, even though it was scary, even though it seemed totally impossible. And friends, that's an incredible family for us to come from. Should we pray? We should pray. All right, let's do it. Jesus, thank you so much for letting us be a part of your family. And not just being a part of your family, but you include us in every single way. Would you please help us remember that at the core of who we are as followers of you, that we are your kids, like we are your children, and that is where our, our identity rests. As followers of Jesus, we are in your family. We are chosen by you to be part of your family. Help us to Feel how special that is, how special we are because of being part of your family, being chosen as part of your family. Thank you so much for the way that you have included us and we get to be a part of what you're doing. Amen. Amen. I think we should finish the song though. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you! Hi, Duluth Vineyard Kids. Let's go ahead and worship together.
give me faith like Daniel. The lions 